good. All right, at the top of your page, if you take a look, we are starting a new concept. And the concept is that of solving an equation. So no more basic operations. It's solving an equation. So solve for x, find the value of x. So the equation 3x plus 1, you perform all the inverse operations, and you guys are pretty good in recognizing your inverse operations for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But do you know the inverse operations, for instance, of taking the square root, taking the cube root, taking the fourth or fifth root? So um, just calling on some random people, what do we get? Our volunteers. Okay. What is square root of 5 squared? Edna? 5. What about the cube root of 10 cubed? Mike? 10. Ten. Moving to some algebra. The square root of x squared. Matt? x. The cube root of y cubed. Mackenzie? y. The square root of 5x squared. Rachel? 5x. 5x. And the cube root is 6y cubed. Alex? 6. 6y. That's because taking the square root and squaring are inverse operations. So the square essentially removes the symbol. So cancels out the square root, cancels out the square root. We're left with x plus 1. Cube root and cubing are inverse operations. So if it was to the fourth root, what power would I have to raise it to to remove the radical symbol? The fourth, and same with the fifth. So this is just y minus 1. So to solve for x, we isolate x by performing all inverse operations. So the first thing you want to do is isolate the radical. You want to get that radical by itself as we had above. So we can raise both sides. Remember with an equation, whenever you do to one side, you have to do to the other to keep it balanced. So we raise both sides of the equation to the power equal to the index. And the index is just, again, the index for our square root is a 2, so that's why we square it. And the index for our cube root is a 3, so that's why we cube it. So they have to match or be the same number. Check your answer. So even if it doesn't say to check, you should be plugging it into your calculator to make sure it works so that you know you have the right answer. But you always substitute in the original equation, not an equation you got as a result of performing an inverse operation. And an answer that does not check is called an extraneous solution. We were looking for extraneous solutions with fractions because the denominator of a fraction can never be zero or else it's undefined. So when I take a look at number one, if we go back to our steps, is the radical isolated? Yes. yes. So now I raise both sides to a power of two to undo the square. Remember, when you square, all it does is remove the symbol. So this is x plus one equals 25. Subtract the one and x is equal to 24. Again, you should go to your calculator, so go to your calculator and check. In number two, we have the cube root of y is equal to 6, so to undo the cube root or remove the radical symbol, we cube both sides. You need to show me the square and the cube, okay? Because if you don't and you get the next line wrong, I can't give you any partial credit. So now I have y equal to 6 times 6 times 6, to 16. So if you do that on your calculator, is the cube root of uh, 2, 16, 6? And it is. So we're good. Now, looking at 3 and 4, the radical is not isolated. So that's our first step. So in the one on the left, number 3, what operation do I have to perform to get rid of the 5? It is division because it's connected to the radical by multiplication. So I'm going to divide first. I need that radical isolated equals 4. Now I can square both sides. And that gets rid of the symbol. 5a equals 16. 16 divided by 5, we get 
fifths. So let's take a moment to check that on our calculator before we circle it. So when I check on my calculator, five times 16 fifths, those cancel ends up being 16. Square root of 16 is 4, and 5 times 4 is 20. It works. And number 4, what's the next step? How do I isolate? Matt? Would you subtract 5? You would subtract 5 first. So subtract the 5, and we've got the Q root of Y equal to 2. Now that the radical is isolated, I do the inverse of Q root, which is cubing, and Y equals 2 cubed. 8. So if I plug it up here, cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 plus 5 is 7. That checks. So that I didn't have to go to the calculator for. You can use the calculator as a quick check or just do it in your head. All right, number 5. The square root of x plus 1 equals 9 halves. The radical is isolated. So we're going to start by squaring. So this is squaring a fraction. Raise your hand. What is the square of 9 halves? So x plus 1 equals... Matt? Yeah? You do square both the 9 and the 2. But 9 squared would be 81. So it's 81 over 2 squared, which is... Four. At this point, you can put the x plus 1 over 1 and cross multiply. We like to set up proportions so that we can do the cross product. So let's put this over 1. 81 times 1 is 81. And 4 times x plus 1 is 4x plus 4. Subtract the 4, divide by 4. So see if you can recognize the inverse operations that would fully isolate or solve for x. We get 4x equal to 81 minus 4. Divide by 4, and x is 77 fourths, or 19.25. So 77 fourths, though, is the answer that we would prefer, okay? Uh, leave it improper, leave it as a mixed number, and then go ahead and let's check that to make sure that it does work on our calculator. All right, it does check in the calculator, and then number 6, 3 over the square root of x minus 5 equals the square root of x minus 5. So let's put it over 1 and cross multiply. So 3 times 1 is 3. And what is the square root of x minus 5 times the square root of x minus 5? x minus 5. Because what you're really doing is squaring it. Multiplying it by itself. So it undoes the symbol. So I have 3 equal to x minus 5, add the 5, and we get 8 equals x. Give a quick check. You tell me, does it check? And we'll move on to checking by hand in 7 and 8. All right, it does check. So moving on to the last two, 7 and 8, we're going to check by hand. And now with each of these, we not only have to isolate by performing one inverse operation, but we're going to have to isolate by performing two. So what's the first inverse operation that I'm going to do in number seven? Mackenzie, add the five. So I add five first. We get four times radical A plus seven equals, those cancel out, 11 plus five is 16. The last inverse operation, well, I shouldn't say the last because we're going to end up squaring. So the next inverse operation we have to do, Rachel, divide by 4. So I have the square root of a plus 7 equals 4. Now I can square it, gets rid of the symbol, and I have a plus 7 equals 16. Subtract the 7, and a equals 9. So to check that, I have to substitute in the original equation, and we have to show all uh, work by simplifying. So it's 4 times radical 9 plus 7 minus 5 is that 11. So you're really just focusing on simplifying the radical. 9 plus 7 is 16. So this is really 4 times 4, which is 
16 is 16 minus 5 equal to 11? It is. It checks. I don't need to see it line by line. You can just show me the simplification of the radical part. Last one. Um, first inverse operation we're going to perform is what? We have a cube root instead of a square root, but it's attached by multiplication and addition or subtraction like the last one. Mackenzie? Minus 13. So I have negative 3 times the cube root of x minus 2 equals negative 12. Now I'm going to divide by a negative 3. Those cancel. And I'm left with the cube root of x minus 2 equals 4. Cube both sides and x minus 2 equals 64, add the 2, and x equals 66. To finish with the check, we just need to substitute in the original problem. So is 13 minus 3 times the cube root of 66 minus 2, 1. Well, 66 minus 2 is the cube root of 64, which is 4, times this 3 is 12, and 13 minus 12 is 1.